See how Turkey spells their fucking country's name? I'll yeah, what now. the hell? <laughs> During the Olympics, it's like Turkey A. -E. <laughs> <laughs> I think India is going to change their name Wait, too. Wait, There's like a national Dude. movement. National movement to bring back breakdancing. What are you talking about? Oh, dude. Dude, they shouldn't do breakdancing. They should do like serving. Like, oh, yeah. Like, like the they should do uh, your mama jokes. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dance well, Imagine dude. Olympic quality dissing. That would be dude, so fucking yeah. great. Awesome. Mid 2000s. And then Australia comes battles. in with, like, your mama's so fat that she's fat. And you're like, how did you get yeah. qualified? <laughs> Turns out she just wanted a free vacation. Did y'all see the story about that? No. That girl, that breakdancing Australian girl, she's getting like uh, investigated or whatever because apparently her husband was the one that picked their group to go up from Australia, her and like Group B or whatever she was in. And she had said to somebody that she was just using this as a way to get a free vacation to, to France, to Paris. It's so, like she wasn't qualified at all to do the breakdancing. Like, I know the qualifications probably aren't super high, but she didn't obviously know what she was doing. So That's great. <laughs> yeah. Fucking awesome, mate. I mean, it she... totally tracks, right? I don't know yeah. if that's just like some... BuzzFeed news article or whatever, but it sounds pretty legitimate. <laughs> yeah, it's very blue. I thought it would make a really funny comedy movie. Yeah. Like, of like her story of like her getting to the Olympics and just sucking ass at everything. <laughs> Break dancing. <laughs> uh. Did you see there's like one lady, I think she. Like, I forgot what event it was, but, like, she was living in France and, like, she wanted to be on her Olympic team or whatever. And they were like, if you want to do it in the Paris Olympics, you have to come, you have to move to Paris. And you have to be trained by our national Olympic coaches. And she's like, I don't want to do that. My dad's Albanian. I'm going to go do their team instead because I can just, I don't have to leave my house. Right. And then, like, she beat all of the French. <laughs> like, should you just let me compete, dickheads? <laughs> Albania was like, yeah, sure. We have six athletes, of course. Right? Yeah. I guess there's no vetting process, like, for breakdancing. Yeah, yeah, why the just, fuck was that even added? You just have to be dressed up well, like you're from it's the now gone. Isn't it gone now? Yeah, they took it out. It's already been disbanded. It's been it's next. Oh, yeah. God. Flag One football, person fucked it up. lacrosse, cricket, and baseball will be in the next one, though. Wait, wait, which ones? Flag football, cricket, lacrosse, and baseball will be in the, the uh, LA one. Interesting. First time football will be in it ever, so... Be interesting. That's interesting that uh, baseball's in it. How many man? Baseball's a world sport though, so it makes sense. Like, there's a lot of players that come play from like Japan or Cuba or whatever, like South America. There's a lot of players from around the world. I think cricket is interesting to me. Cricket's fairly big. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, like, why is it in the U.S.'s Olympics? We were like, yes, let's add cricket. Cause like we just recently got like a cricket team. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. It's IOC, right? It... Yeah, true. Good kind of stuff. But like, uh, how many um, how many fucking men are on a flag football team? It's probably like seven on seven. I'm sure. Okay. The, I remember uh, the Pro Bowl games. It was like I felt like it was like four people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it'll probably be. I would imagine it's, it's yeah, maybe seven on seven. Probably have a guy that does stand and block for the QB. Dallas, are you all logged in and ready? Yes, he is. Okay, she is. Sorry. Not a problem. Theater of the mind. Yeah, I mean we're already gonna start kind of theater of the mind. I guess we can talk about where we were. Um, so we had helped the, um, 
Sapphire Sentinel, right, the Golem, um, gets the Prince into literal heaven, um, along with his Nether Scroll, um, which is a super cool artifact if you guys decided, you know what, we're gonna break bad and steal that shit. Um, it's pretty badass, maybe I should link it sometime. Um, but the Sapphire completed his purpose, um, crushed his Sapphire heart, and within was the key to the uh, sanctuary that holds the Basin of Binding, right? The um, the like uh, what am I trying to say? What's his name? Clearak knows where it was, but he couldn't activate it um, because. He didn't have the key. That was kind of a separation of uh, duties there. Um, that was given to Prince... almost said Prince Kahim. Prince Hamakai. Kahim over there using his wish to become a prince. Wishful thinking. Oh, yeah. Um, and then... I think where we left off, you guys were on your way out. You saw, once again, your disembodied floating doorway. Uh, a few more details. Um, I think this is the first time you've seen it in your waking hours. Uh, you also saw on the door uh, a symbol of a flaming hammer. Um, and it was ajar enough for you to see there was a small humanoid figure working a forge in there. Um, everyone assumed it was a dwarf. I never said that. Never said that. Could be, it could be anybody. Um, and then... Yeah, just as you go to open it, it of course disappears again. Um, but now that we have the key, I believe the plan was um, go get with Master Clearak and head to wherever the heck the Basin of Binding is uh, to yeah. create a vessel. Surely it opens a door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Or something. Yeah. So, do you guys have anything you want to do before that? Oh, and your Bedeen Nomad like fan friend, they fucking... I forgot. I think you guys did use some potions, and he definitely used Necklaces of Fireball, I think, recently. Um, yeah, I, I can have, tell you what's in party inventory. I have superior healing, two of them, and a scroll heal, so I'm good on healing. External healing, at least. Did we get any extra money while we were gone? How long were we gone? Uh, I mean, you guys have $16,000. 16000 Yeah. Yep. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Well, I might as well buy some more heal scrolls. <laughs> yeah. You know, the new rules, um, healing potion is bonus action, like, officially. Yeah. But heal scrolls is just straight 70 HP. Yes. Hard to beat that. What? Uh, I saw some people that were saying they were going to be, like, um, like, as a house rule... They were gonna do like a healing potion as a bonus action, but if you use your full action, you get like a hundred percent max healing from it. Hmm. And I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> like, damn. All right, heal is a. Da, 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 what are we? What is it? Fifth level spell? Sixth level spell. 
Um, and so if I go over to my same magical items, consumables by name. So that's cool. Sixth level is one thousand two hundred and eighty dollars. Doll hairs. Yeah, gold pieces is is is. Not for Kahim's parents. I have one scroll of heal, one scroll of cure, cure wounds, and two superiors. That's exactly what I have. <laughs> All right, dude. I... I mean, we got 16,000 gold, and we're about to go do, like, huge mission stuff. Can we, so we'll... tra can we check uh, Resume's inventory? Yeah. Can't remember if it was this one you guys used some stuff on, or if it was the last one. Uh, inventory, let's see. She has a spell scroll of heal, a spell scroll of aura of vitality, spell scroll of cure wounds. She has one, no, she has two superiors. Uh, yeah. And a potion of speed. Yeah, I have one of those too. Spade, you said? Yeah. Potion of speed. Which is just math. Fourth level potion of math. What do you guys think? Anyway? And then we, we have like an obscene amount of money. Yeah, yeah you got $16,000. You should probably spend uh, all of it. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> well, let's just get four more scrolls of healing for the inventory. How much tele how many teleports we got? Shit, we, we, have two, we have two scrolls of healing in their fucking inventory. And we have five scrolls of teleport. <laughs> what the fuck? You heroes of the realm. Yeah, true. Um, man. Well, if we, I mean, if he's telling us to spend it all, we certainly should be expecting, like, kind of the fight of your life kind of thing. Right, I'm just trying to think of what to spend it all. Okay, so I, I have a Brazier of Command Fire Elementals. What other type of equipment is similar to that, that you can purchase? Um, gosh, so many items, that's what you want to do. Um... I don't think there's going to be many. Um, it doesn't even have to be that. Just something that, like, oh, like, we can do, like, Wand of Web. Like, that could be useful. Yeah. Um, da, 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 let's see. Combat what does Wand of Web do? Cast Web. Yeah, it shoots out a bunch of spider webs that people get spider caught in. Yeah. Um... Spider Oh, you also have a staff of withering you found. Um, and you also found a wand of polymorph. Holy shit, we have a wand of <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you could buy a wand of web or a wand of matching missiles. Wand, wand, uh, wand. Or a... Uh, got a ring of shooting stars, that's pretty good. Oh, why don't, we just get a, why don't we get a handful of elemental gems? Uh, da, 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 da. Consumables by name, elemental gem. These are the ones that. Yeah. So let's just get like one of each that's not red. Alright. Those are a thousand apiece. So it's 3,000. Oh, see, they have Ring of Earth Elemental Command, Ring of Air Elemental Command, Ring of Water Elemental Command. All right, let me add.
They don't even require attunement. Oh, and they have other things you can cast out of them. Dominate monster on an earth elemental. Oh, this is... This yeah. Is attunement. Okay. I'm sorry, that sounds fucking OP as fuck. Oh, yeah, here's the bowl of commanding water elementals and a sensor of controlling air elementals. Fuck, how long was I muted for? Jesus Christ. Uh, not like crazy long. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's... Can't go wrong with, with that stuff. Healing's always good. Um, yeah, there's spell scrolls that. What's the uh, the price of? So we have healing, potion, supreme. What's the price of that? I will look that up. Consumables by name. Potion of supreme healing is thirteen fifty. We might as well all get one of those. Alright. Supreme Reader. Damn. That's uh, 10d4 plus 20. That's a lot of HP for a potion. So. Okay, uh, so that's 5,400 plus 3,000. So... So I got 83.78 left. Uh, I'll add that to everybody's. Supreme. Potion of healing. For this is supreme. One there. Let's make has got one. Make sure we all have. I know it's minor, but let's make sure we all have torches. Whoever needs them, I have four, so it's probably good enough. All right, back to over supreme to everybody. The supremes. Nice. What else are we gonna be buying? Are we? I'm trying to find like what else. Yeah. I mean, is there anything you feel like you have an issue with? Specifically. No. That staff of striking is pretty much like the ultimate weapon for me. So. <laughs> yeah. Raleigh's got a sweet rapier, a sweet dragon bow. Resume's got like nine swords to choose from, and plate plate mail plus one. <laughs> yeah. Kahim has two staves. Yeah, and there's a third one in the inventory. <laughs> the staff of withering. What about grenade launcher? Oh, the RB. There might be one, to be honest. Spelljammer did some weird shit. <laughs> um, poison. Should have harvested from that purple worm when you had a chance. Well, we didn't roll high enough to know that. True. Run through what else I could possibly want. But I'm not coming up with nothing. Yeah, is there something you would like? What's Darren's instant fortress? I had to borrow a laptop from switching because the other one wouldn't even load Chrome and then it closed the game and shit. 
borrow a laptop? What the fuck? I'm in my parents' house. I'm like surrounded by my family, so I'm doing that. Uh, do you have a? Uh... Oh, you were in a hotel. Go to Gate and get the <laughs> instant fortress. Oh God. <laughs> You're not going to, like, shove that in somebody's mouth and set it off, are you? <laughs> no, we're going to use it to long rest whenever we need it and we, in a dire situation. <laughs> Doesn't Dallas have a 10 minute long uh, rest? Oh, yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, and the bottle's a little less conspicuous than the whole ass fortress. It's like, yeah. the, it's like the Fortnite instant fortresses. It's literally like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... And it's like made of solid adamantium. Yeah, it's or... adamantine. You can't open it with a knock or chime of opening. <laughs> yeah. Because even if you went inside, it would still take a full eight hours. Right? So it's like if you had a full eight hours, you could right. just post up, right? Yep. Do -do 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 -do. I don't even well, know how much that would cost. Can we hop into his flask or his uh bottle for 10 minutes it gives us an hour rest do that eight times so we only use 80 minutes of time for one long rest maybe <laughs> maybe that's a mental it's a, right there. <laughs> yeah it's a uh um no i think you can only do it no, you can stay in there for up to ten uh, hours. Cape of the Mountain Bank was was Mountain Bank, whatever that is. Dimension door. Yeah. So is it? Let's see. How much is plus three plate mail for resume? No oh god, no, I'm definitely not giving her that. <laughs> Come on! Those flat ACs, like, even plus one is too much, really. Because she actually has, like, she's got crazy ACs as it is. How much is an immovable rod? Ooh. Uh, da -da -da -da. Um, I'm gonna put that in. Non-combat items, my name. Immovable rod is 5,000. How big is an immovable rod? It says it's five pounds. Like, how long is that? I just think it's like a standard length of lead pipe. Lead or two. Alright, well, I guess that's everything we need. Um. Can yeah. we or, or, Andrew uh, to get back? Yeah, wait, for Andrew, let's get some uh you can get some buffed arrows, right? Like not just plus one, you can get some Yeah. Buffed. Yeah, I mean he can get Actually I don't know all the all different kinds of arrows. There's like arrows of dragon slaying and that kind of shit. Um let's see. Uh da 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 Um Looks like most of those maybe aren't. Okay, a, a plus three ammo is four hundred dollars for one. Yikes. Four hundred gold. Arrow of slaying is six hundred. Magic weapon that means to slay a particular kind of creature. What's silver and arrow going to do? 
That's probably... Silvered weapons are for, like... Yeah. Um, yeah, Arrow of Slaying. Could get some Beads of Force. What was that? Um, you, like, throw it at people and it, like, explodes. and They take... They make a deck save or take 5d4 force damage. And then, like, it, uh, like, tracks them. It basically traps them in a little bubble. Mm, I think I'd rather just hit him with my staff. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. But it's also, like, it's a Pokeball. It, like, captures them in the, a sphere. Um, for like one minute, but it's a really, it's like a DC 15 save. Yeah, um, and at our level, I'm sure that's a pretty easy save. For most of yeah. The um, yeah. Alright, well. More necklaces of fireballs, always good. You could do oil of sharpness. Isn't there like a gaseous um, form oil? Oil of etherealness? Oh, I don't have a necklace of fireballs. I thought we got, I thought we bought another one. Yeah, I remember. There is a potion of gaseous form. Yeah. Andrew's potion of growth. Potion of whatever. Potion of invulnerability. Everyone has one except for me, so I think I'm. I, I thought but, I remembered us all buying one. Yeah, sure. How much? Just the regular one, like the nothing extra. There's like three of them or something. Yeah, I think it's all. Uh, how much is the oil of... Not ethereal, because there's one for gaseous form. There's a potion of gaseous form. Okay. For 300. Um, Let's just get a couple of those. those. Those can come in useful. I mean, you can escape out of rooms that are locked if there's like a little gap to go through and stuff. So. Alright. I'll throw some of those in the party yeah. inventory. Are we bringing Resume with? Yes. Yeah, but she's just sleeping the whole time and never fights. Bitch. Oof, I might need to go get my knee brace. Go right back. Alright, riveting stuff so far. Uh, I know. Where the hell did Andrew go? I thought you were going to be in your hotel. No, three-day weekend for Labor Day. Nice. I have a funeral on Tuesday. Not nice. Yeah. I thought that was going to be 
ready to connect. I'm still working. Alright, sorry. Alright. Well. Been a decent amount there. Um, so now are we ready to talk to Master Clearack? Do we feel yes. like we're not coming back after this journey, or it'll be like a long time or something? Um, uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, every adventure is, you know, potentially the last one, right? But, right. uh, I don't know. You you, you haven't really that, talked to like Clear Act about the shit? journey. Okay. I feel like we, should write, we should write a buy? letter and say that if we don't if we die and don't make it back, then all of our gold goes to Kahim's parents. <laughs> he would sign that shit instantly. <laughs> He's already signing it right now. So Kahim's presenting yeah. the draft. <laughs> Yeah, you can definitely. There, I don't think you know how many fucking notaries are in Candlekeep. <laughs> Literally every <laughs> single Isn't person. Everyone a notary? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're probably notaries at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Just by default. The fucking your horse that's been in the stable is a notary. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, let's it's get like our, if you're yeah, notary. Yeah, let's get our horse to notarize it, and then. Uh... All right. Yeah, let's get all of the hoof prints on it. Yeah, you guys get some incredibly large horse-sized stamps. Uh, you know, it costs money for each time they have to sign, which is a bitch. No, uh, that would be a dog. Well, uh, god damn it. All right. You guys get that all, get that all notarized, and they are ready um, to receive your funds. Uh, I as guess soon as they walk don't... out, they're like, I hope you guys die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Gahim's dad is there with a crossbow. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So you guys, um, you get that all taken care of. You should not return within a, a year or whatever. Um, you will be presumed dead, and uh, they will receive your funds. Um, Gahim's mom will finally be able to finish her degree. Uh, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> This is Dr. Professor Kahim's mom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't that her name? Her name's right now is just Mrs. Kahim's mom. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Your mom and dad have to be have to be 30 meters apart for their names to show up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You head into the box to see Clearac. Um, and... Gotta get a little bit more. Um, let's see, Less he's ready to take Minecraft you. Music. Yeah, dude, I've been playing a lot of Minecraft. Um, Clearac, um, you show him the key. Uh, he he's very uh, excited. Uh, he said it's it's gonna be a marvel to see the basin at work and uh an honor to bring you guys over there um so you say your farewells to the wadudes um see you dude track. he immediately hands everyone a spell scroll of non-detection um he says you must use this to cover your tracks um it non-detection just prevents anyone from like scrying you for the next eight hours um obviously if he's taking you to a super secret location um that's gonna be mandatory so uh, everybody yeah everybody non-detection's up real quick before we leave i run over and grab one more uh superior healing potion and hand it to our ton rocks all right. So he... okay. Potion. Okay, I'll just put in the superior. Dude. Does he actually have an inventory? He sure does. All right. Uh, oh. 
So he's ready to go too. Um, and then everyone does their non detections. You are invisible from being scried for the next eight hours. Clearak then gathers everyone together and he casts the teleport spell, bringing you all to uh, a sea of dunes. Um, as far as the eye can see in all directions, nothing but bare horizons. Um, you don't know where you are, but you know it's hot. You know there's red sand. Uh, and you see Clearak sort of get his bearings uh, and sort of walks over to behind uh, one of the endless crests and valleys of this red desert sand. Um, and he finds a patch of sand, slightly lighter in color. Um, he says, uh, a few magic words. You know, he goes, uh, Zarharak al Kriva, as the earth begins to move beneath his feet uh, as he steps into the quicksand. Uh, like jelly, his footsteps send ripples across the surface. Uh, he comes to a stop in the center of the patch. Slowly lets the quicksand take him in, and he disappears. Will you all follow he him? He went in alone. Say what? Right. He I went in alone. Follow in without questioning anything. All right. Yeah. Same. Let's I'm roll. Here, and Resme, and uh, Kahim, and Raleigh. Anton Rocks, yes. begrudgingly, all walk into the sand and let themselves be taken by the big sand as well. You think into the sand, um, it's immediately apparent there is no escape. Uh, you sink for what feels like an eternity until you feel yourself become heavier, no longer falling through sand, but falling through air. Um, you wipe the sand from your eyes and behold uh, a miracle um, floating before you in an endless void of twilight is a great cog nearly 500 yards wide uh, atop it is an ancient temple of red sandstone the eternal twilight casts a surreal otherworldly glow upon the temple giving it an almost ethereal quality. Um, you float purposefully towards the Great Cog. Uh, the details of the temple come into view. Carved into the red sandstone are deep, intricate carvings that tell stories of great Gandhian heroes and contain vivid depictions of crafting and forging and the endless dance of gears and mechanisms. The surface of the sandstone seems to shimmer faintly as if imbued with an inner fire that reflects its divine nature. You land at the entry courtyard of the temple, uh, and as if on cue, the great cog makes a single movement. Great blue runes adorn the cog, uh, as it lets out a metallic clang, those runes glow a deep blue. The color reverberates across the carvings on the sandstone temple, and the light slowly begins to fade back to the glow you saw before. Each clang of the cog renews this glow, and then lets it slowly fade away, sending vibrations through the temple. Um... After taking a moment to take it all in, uh, Clearak speaks up. He says, uh, I did not think I would ever return to this holy place. We will proceed to the basin room, uh, touch nothing but gaze upon our Lord's wonders as much as you can. 
You will not see a grander collection until you walk the halls of Wonderhome. You guys gonna say anything to him, or are you gonna follow him in? And when you say touch nothing, do you mean like like this right here? No! Touch. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch nothing. Alright, I guess we will ascend the steps of the temple. Um, you find yourself in a grand hall filled with intricate mechanisms and forges. The walls are adorned with wondrous mosaics and reliefs depicting legendary creations and the divine act of forging. Um, the central chamber features a massive glowing forge at its heart. Glowing blue and fueled by the runes of the great cog. On various tables and displays you see wondrous creations, perfectly crafted weapons, armor, trinkets, and machines. Uh, you see, like, a giant golden mechanical boar made to ride into battle. You see flying machines, a pair of ornate spectacles with lenses of sapphire, uh, a set of drafting tools and compasses, tools of all kind, really, with unknown magical properties. You see a pair of scholarly looking automatons slowly moving throughout the hall cleaning examining every artifact you guys gonna touch anything so fucking close to being logged in to be able to see this <laughs> oh, there's nothing to see really <laughs> yeah. oh great <laughs> it's okay you no, can no, still it's get on <laughs> I'm not going to touch anything. I'm like actively trying to avoid touching anything. Unless there's doors, then I'm like, oh, sweating. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like the, the cartoon style beat of sweat, just like accelerating down your face. Yeah. And then it zooms only, out every, and only when I look at a door. Like there's like yeah. this priceless artifact I walk by, nothing. And then I look at a door and it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it's all sandstone. Uh, I get your feathers ruffled. Yeah. How do you feel about beaded curtains? Remember your breathing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't care about beaded curtains. All right, then we're in the clear. All right. Um. Yeah. So, surrounding the central chamber are smaller sanctums dedicated to um, various crafts. You recognize smithing, jewel crafting, wood carving, engineering, architecture, room crafting, alchemy, textiles, all sorts of things. Uh, you also see one alcove that contains a portal to another realm. Through the portal you spy rows and rows of endless bookshelves, seemingly infinitely long and tall. Above the portal is carved a symbol, an unfurled blank scroll. Uh, Clearak makes his way to a smaller sanctum devoted to pottery and clay works. Uh, sitting on a small wooden pedestal, uh, behind a glass case, and the pedestal has a little keyhole on it. Um, sitting in that case is the vessel you have all sworn to protect, the Basin of Binding. Uh, it is a simple thing, really. It's, it's just a clay bowl. Um, until you kind of take a moment to study it and kind of realize its simple design is like wholly perfect. It's a perfect half sphere balanced on a single point. The walls of the bowl are perfectly uniform in their thickness across the entirety. The more you admire and study it, the more you realize like it's truly without flaw. Uh, no mortal hand could craft such a thing. Uh, like the simplest fundamentals of the craft perfected in every way. Uh, Clearax says, There it is. This is the artifact that our order has. I'm switching from mobile to PC. Yeah, has dedicated 
centuries to protecting. Can we touch that? Can you hear me? Can I be heard? Yes. You are heard, sir. You are heard, yes, sir. We are finally ready to get Very, very sorry for the delay. My bad. Sorry, right, we're going to hold against you all the time now. Yeah. I know. I just, we're I tennis like, in the yeah, game. Thanks. I don't like doing that to you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. no, it's fine. It's good because I felt like this was going to be super short anyway. Well, yeah, um, again, apologies, but I'm ready. Um, you will be able to touch it soon. Um, who has the key? Who's going to unlock it? I will unlock it, and I unlock it. All and right. All right. Roll a death saving. Th- no, I'm kidding. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> See, you guys right. remember that Abercrombie and Fitch skit from a long time ago from Mad TV? That do you have the key? Do you have the key? What the fuck? It's like nice to oh, nice abs. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> she it. You unlock it, um, and rather than the glass. Um, being removable now, it just disappears. Let's click. Um, and now you are able to touch it um, if you want to. Um, but Clear Act does say now that we have access to the basin. We must craft the vessel uh, within which you will bind Zufar. Zoltan. So what? Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys want to make? You have like divine tools of every possible crafting art. This is the thing uh, that you are going to steal away a... Zufar in forever. I'd like I vote to make we make a... a giant penis. Yeah. This... Okay. Yeah, you, are beat we talking... you beat me to it. I was gonna say. Yeah, are we going to hammer this out of bronze? Is it going to be glass blown? Like, what are Long we talking about? Uh, why not a mixture of all? Let's make it beautiful. Let's have, like, bronze. Well, bronze will destroy your hand. Well, it'll be magic, so it'll. it'll... Yeah, let's it'll have some bronze. Off. Let's have some, like, glass blown parts to it. Uh... Yeah, Jacob, you take the shaft and we'll get either ball. <laughs> Can this thing. Uh... Be all like magical where it can uh, make uh, vibrations on its own without battery power. I don't know if the basin's that advanced now. Only a god <laughs> made it. <laughs> what uh, what is this thing called that we're making? Like to trap Zufar in? What's that? DNA? Uh, genie vessel, I guess. Okay. Oh, but oh, but we're gonna we're making the vessel, but shaped like a dick. Itty bitty living space. Yeah. You guys, that's what I'm saying. You can do whatever you want. Well, if we're uh, going to trap them in there, can we make it a Micropinus? Dude, sure could. it definitely needs to be Micropinus. I mean, we can just, like, carry it in our pockets and, like, make fun of it all the time. <laughs> Perfect. Talk about how inferior it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it'll still be very ornate. Like, it's going to have a lot of artistic... Uh, touches to it for sure yeah a lot of artism a lot of artism it could just be one vein with a dickhead <laughs> i was gonna try and give you so guys give me a description and then i put it in vein. yeah and then i would put it in the ai image generator but it definitely won't let me yeah, do that yeah it won't let you do that <laughs> but i mean it makes sense like we want to freaking humiliate him as much as possible let's put him in a freaking Mac- I don't even know. Yeah. I mean, Jin don't reproduce, so I don't even think he would know what that is. But we, we would. Right. AI funny. won't do NSFW stuff. No. I see. What about, like, all fake porn and shit? Well, yeah, not unless you do, like, the really sketchy gross shit. Yeah. Yeah, not like your mainstream, like, Mid Journey or uh, Dally or anything like that. They won't do it. I'm sure they have other ones that are for that. Yeah, sure. So big penis, small penis, or what's going on? Small penis. Yeah, Micropenis. Micro- All right, so you guys, you guys are gonna get out the jewel crafting kit. 
Yeah. Um, for like a tiny gold studded. It does have to be <laughs> hollow and like you have Perfect. to be able to open and close it. There's a pen panoose hole, so. Yeah, let's give it, a, give it a, a Prince Albert and that it unscrews so you can open it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. So we get the jeweling Perfect. kit. Um, what what metal? It can be like triple locked. What metal are we are we thinking of here? Uh, well, let's just do a mixture of various precious metals. All right. Have some gold, I some silver, gold. platinum. We'll throw some you jewels like in the there. Gold represents the Asians. The black diamonds represent the black people. <laughs> Okay, so this is an all-inclusive Macropolis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. want it to be okay. fully yeah. representative of every, like, race and type of creature. Which would piss Zufar off even more if he knew about that, so... Yeah, except right. for everything except for Jin specifically. Yeah. yeah. Is that what he is? Yep. Yeah, he's a genie. Right. We, yeah, yeah so we want to be say, inclusive yeah, of every race except for Jin. Yeah. Okay. All the right. Woke Jin. So, like, it's got to have a little bit of, like... Uh, like woke Toad. <laughs> okay. Woke Toad. <laughs> Should it woke be Toad like a... <laughs> Yeah, dude. That's my next DD character's name. Alright. Fuck, I wish I had a, a fucked up generator that I could make this with. But... <laughs> That's the official name of it. The Woke Toad Micropinus. <laughs> God damn it. All right. Well, does anybody have Head proficiency up. with said tools? Uh, I think there's a jeweler's kit, right? Let's see what. I think I have something like that. Let's see. Resume's got herbalism kit. I got herbalism kit. Oh, I have cartoons. Uh, I just remembered Resume's gonna get the spark notes on that. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like Raleigh has Thieves Tools oh, and Akir yeah. has. I don't even know. I have String. I have proficiency with herbalism, woodcarvers, and cartographers. Woodcarvers, nerd. I have a hammer. Yeah, we might have to pivot and do this exact thing, but with all wood. No, oh, dude, you could, yeah, some sick wood joinery on a small Here's scale. Like a bullshit, like, I have, like, this, uh, I mean, I have so much little trinket shit that together I'm sure all, I could make something, anything out of all these things. All right, well. All right, well, like, unless uh, Clearac can do it, then I guess I'll do a wood version of it, because I have proficiency right. in wood carver's tools. So why don't you give me a couple checks with those woodcarver tools? So it's Jeez. not going to be fucking metal? No, because none of us can craft that. Okay. Let me see, how do you how do you look at your proficiencies? Because I was looking at what oh, they had, actually. What the fuck? How do you look at proficiency? How do you look at tools with proficiencies? Whenever I just go, you just go to the first page that go underneath the skills, and it has tools down there. Oh, where's my ass? I mean, I have supplies. Some, it contains uh, near bladed scissors and a pair of pliers. No, it's not about having the tools to do it. We have the tools in front of us. It's that you have to have proficiency to use the tools, and none of us do. With, to use the yeah. metals. Then. All right. Akir, you were able to select some very fine pieces of blocks of wood to to uh, what kind of what are we going for? We got like some nice acacia, some mahogany, rosewood, rosewood. Got All some right. of that tiger wood shit, or it's like striped. Oh, nice! Hell yeah! All right. To you select some great things. pieces, yeah, <laughs> and you're able to. You know, make some nice cuts and then join those together into a block so that it'll have some nice striping of different woods throughout. And you are able to shape it uh, nice and fine. Um, 
you're having a little bit of difficulty with getting that wits off top. Um, so I need someone to help you out. Get, get one roll with advantage real quick. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh man. Jesus fucking Christ. A three, a six, a one, a two, and a four. Out of five fucking rolls. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, you definitely break it. <laughs> we gotta start over. God damn it. You gonna uh, tweak your design, or are you gonna keep rolling with this? Oh, right that's... Alright. You definitely get back to where you were. I, I get rid of one of the weaker woods. Collection. Yeah. And go for, like, a hard cherry or something. Nice hardwood. Yeah, yeah makes nice sense. Okay. Yellow wood. Work away. All right, you managed to get that fitted. Um, some people. Uh, not yeah, people, but to, your party members help you out. Yeah. On top of this piece while I do this other thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The. I really wanted to generate something, but I can't. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we all have it in our mind's eye, at least. Mine, mine is like, yeah, they just figure it. It's certainly not straight. It's like kind of angry, but like scared looking and really small. Dude, one time my wife told me about she had this patient who had half a penis. What? And I was like, I jokingly said, is it the top or the bottom? Oh, my God. and she said it was the left. Oh, <laughs> the God. Left. I was like, dude, it split down the middle. What the fuck? Like it got like chunked out on like the whole side. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I, don't, I didn't ask, but yeah, she, he had the left half of the penis. That's, just, that's which is that not the half I would want. I would want righty, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah. Cause anyway, I mean, your penis is bigger, I guess. Of course, yeah. Is everybody's? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, Short you do. Story. Emily yeah. was in a, on jury duty, and the whole case was this guy got stabbed in the dick in his sleep by his crazy girl ex girlfriend, and like, yeah, he, she was found guilty. Good, dude. How many men were in the jury? <laughs> Pretty good split, and like, what's crazy is like the the like this the proof evidence. It's a long story. It was there's like a security video from like across the street of like a sharpie being thrown over a fence, which is like part of the story that like all tracked and sealed the case together. It was like a, a video, an obscure video of a sharpie being like seen being thrown over a fence. What the hell? Yeah, like I said, long story. That should be the linchpin of every criminal investigation. <laughs> sharpie. It's like instead of smoking gun, they're camera. like, "Where's the sharpie over the fence? I need it." <laughs> Did everyone yeah. apparently everyone was just fucking pissed at this lady because they, they it's like they had made up their minds before they had proof but I mean Emily's smarter than that she's not gonna convict somebody but it happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know my brother got a letter for jury duty while he was in prison whoa did he go <laughs> did he take it I would take no. that shit <laughs> I was like bro you guys have him. It's, it's, it's my civic duty. Yeah, but like one, if you're a felon, you can't. Jail. You can't like. <laughs> you're a felon. You can't be on a. A fucking uh, jury anyway. It's like, oh. you know. But he was like currently incarcerated. I so like we had to like. To vote. No, you can't be on juries either. Hmm. Which is vote. like, huh? Might be worth it. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. no, I've I've always wanted to be on jury duty. That sounds excellent. Yeah, I've never I think I got called once and I was like I don't even live in that jurisdiction anymore because I was like living in Huntsville or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um get fucking fined for not like updating your address or some shit. Yeah, probably. Anyway, Do we want to retcon it to be an actual genie vessel that's made of wood, or are we just sticking with the penis? That's up to y'all. Your characters. 
Well, I mean, what's gonna ha what's like the long term vote. happen to this? It's probably gonna get like buried in some desolate place, like thrown into Mordor. Like this is. Uh, a I think it's or gonna be the <laughs> obvious place where it could be used by the next pair of like villains to uh, set up the next. Uh, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be cataloged here in this vault of treasures. <laughs> And, and protected by like future generations of craft guard, hopefully for millennia. Yeah, I don't see any reason why it should change shape then. Yeah. Especially yeah, we if it has off to the craft guard guys. It'd be hilarious. Dude, phallic art has been around for like ever. All right. Well, I crafted the coolest wooden multicolored yes. penis. Yes, with veins I'm... of rosewood. And you know a shaft of it of uh, ebon wood and yellow wood. hiker wood. Yep, and it has a. Yeah, uh, again, it's still all inclusive. It's still a woke chode. Um, it's very yeah. micro. It's very micro. Yeah. It's yeah <laughs> for sure. All right. It's like a saucer. <laughs> yeah. All right. You've crafted this lovely uh artifact and named it it's now time to go dip it into the basin um clear act is waiting for you there i had to the yeah i did like i'm holding it with just like the small the slightest tiniest grip with like like two little claws but like that stretched for me like i don't want to touch it you peen yeah like just in between two talons only, like not even touching yeah, like the fingers. Yeah, like very tips, tips of the claws. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Clearak mentions that you are clearly um, inspired by ancient Tetheries uh, techniques and artistry. Um, yeah, the wall of evaluates on the wall really gave me inspiration. Yeah, yeah, on the yeah. The um, Clearak also taking like a little claws. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> You guys are gonna do do that part. He's standing behind the pedestal with it, um, with behind the pedestal with the base on it, um, and he kind of holds his hands over it um, and says some more magic words. Vornkai Tir Azura Vornthal, uh, and from nowhere the basin begins to fill with water, starting from the bottom and filling up like one of those rich guy um, bathtubs. And then whoever's holding it can now dip it within the waters. It must be completely submerged. Which I think is Raleigh. Little dip. Um, yeah, so Ra Raleigh does the little dip. The water pulses with divine energy as you remove your vessel. Um, in, in your hands, you feel power like you've not encountered before. Uh, and you now have the means by which to end Zufar's impending reign of terror. Fuck yeah. Just one second. I gotta get some more water. As you guys ogle the micropene. Water? Free time. So I rented out. Um the second bedroom in my townhome while I'm away just because it's just sitting idle and there's literally nothing in that room. So there was like an office setup, so I just moved into my bedroom. Anyway, I re I, the guy was cool, yada yada, no problem, but then I didn't realize that he's like, he's like one or I don't know what percentage, very small percentage like Asperger's. <laughs> so he's, he has like, he's very clean and he has like no friends, which is great. He sticks to himself like stays in the room and only goes to work and comes back and like he's just a homebody it's a perfect perfect tenant um but he, he has weird ticks like he'll um like when he empties the dishwasher he like empties it but like perfectly organizes everything on the counter and doesn't put anything away or like he'll uh he'll like leave the toilet paper like a certain length like unrolled like uh you like five and five squares just like hanging down instead of it being like normally rolled up and it, it's just like shit like that but it's like 
everywhere around the house. Everything's like slightly disarrayed in a way that he likes it. And so I just don't interfere. I just, you know, put it, I just do the same shit just so he feels comfortable. Um, but yeah. Interesting. The lining up the clean dishes, but not putting them away is kind of. Yeah. So, I mean, I told him part, cause the thing is they don't have, he doesn't have social skills. So like I explained to him that and then he like puts them away mostly but he still organizes some stuff but again i don't really care because i'm not really here any, uh, until i won't be back till like november or december and then uh, what was the other thing um, uh, oh yeah before we left emily told him he's like we're like hanging out in the living room just chatting and she's like oh have you sat on the couch yet He's like, no, because he's like sitting on like a chair in the like opposite of the room. And she's like, oh, you should. It's, a, but careful, it's really dangerous. And then like we just like kind of chuckled a little bit and just kept going with the conversation. So then we left. And then the next day, I came home and he tells me he's like, hey, so I was like looking at the couch for like over an hour and I couldn't figure out like how it's dangerous. I'm like, <laughs> holy shit. So I had to explain to him that like she meant that it was so comfortable that it was like dangerous. You'll get like sucked into it and want to fall asleep. But he took it literally like the couch was actually dangerous. So he stared at it for an hour. <laughs> well, he, oh, like, yeah, dude. he like fucking investigate. He like rolled investigation. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Step in. Investigation, that 20 insight, that one. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. you rolled a 20 or a one. I still don't know. <laughs> All right. So, um, Hirak, after a moment, says, um, there's one more thing I'm going to show you. There's the basin is our charge, but we guard one other artifact here. Um, go to another alcove marked with the gemstone. Um, various jewel crafts here, circlets that float above pedestals various magic rings and necklaces and amulets. But in the center, cordoned off by a low sandstone wall, uh, is a black diamond floating in a glass case. The diamond slowly rotates, has 60 or so facets, and arcs of magical energy shoot off it and dissipate against the glass. He says, uh, Zufar seeks this place to destroy the basin, but he also seeks this, the Kalamemnon crystal. Long ago, when the ancient Kalashites and Tetheres used the basin to overthrow their genie overlords, they used this device to imprison Kalim, the Jin Emperor, and Memnon, the Afridi King. The crystal imprisoned their bodies, along with the bodies of hundreds of their generals and lieutenants. Both their spirits will roam the Kalim Desert and the Thir. I know that Zufar seeks Kalim's release, but I do not know if he wishes Kalim to serve him, or if he wishes to serve Kalim. They both seem like they are too headstrong to follow anyone, but if he should succeed, it will undoubtedly lead to a second era of Skyfire. Endless war between Jinn and Ifrit across southern Faerun, while our people rot in chains. So, Clearak, yeah, telling you this again, um, because his time is short. He's revealed the final secrets. He's shown you how to get to the basin, how to use it, um, so you guys, you know, the race against the clock for him, like, has completed. He has passed on all of the secrets of the craft guard, and he has a deep sigh. Um, tells Wait, you all. passed on the secrets? I'm sorry, was that... Clearak. Clearak has told you all the secrets of the craft guard. What you guys, uh, the secret society you guys joined while you were searching for him. 
who sighs a great sigh of relief. Looks quite satisfied with himself and your choices. And he says, um, you know, this fight is up to you now. This moment feels kind of nostalgic. It's like, you know, Akira and I have been his uh, subjects for, you know, a lifetime, essentially. And obviously, Kahim and Resme are um, like our newer companions, but they've been, you know, it's been so long and our lives are so short as Eric Kokras that, you know, they've been with us for half our life now. And it feels like in this moment that they're also uh, clerics subjects uh, kind of like break uh, it's like a family bond feel for Raleigh seems like where are these forces at dude you've been gathering forces for like a year the cure feels oh, like he's, he's got is forces. about to tell us he's gonna like die in a minute yeah <laughs> and I'm gay <laughs> yeah should have been gathering <laughs> life forces dude he pushes a button and a dart shoots out the wall hits him in the neck no. <laughs> no. I mean, we no. have a potion of longevity. Have a roll for that. Give you another year. So. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. Yeah. There's a moment of silence. You all take it in. Things you've worked so hard for for so long, you now have the tools to uh, prevent calamity. Start. Heading back, and you see, for the first time, the door that has haunted your dreams. Um, not floating in some random place. It is inlaid in the wall. It is open further than any time you've seen it. She this isn't a, Yeah, this is no vision. This is the true door. I you hear... Through. Yeah, you hear Smith at work, bellows, anvil blows... Um, and the door um, has that symbol on it of a flaming um, hammer. You open it up, and it's a room, you know, filled with darkness. But there is a large forge uh, in the center. Um, behind the forge is a large circular ring, a dormant portal of some hot uh, kind and you see that small humanoid figure not a dwarf a gnome working the forge there is a fiery warhammer hovering beside him um, and it, he brings his hammer down and then immediately that warhammer breaks down uh, as they're hammering on this anvil he sees you coming in, and he adjusts his goggles, and he sniffs the air loudly. He says, ho, 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 and he takes a big sniff. Steel, gold, silver, platinum. He approaches you and sniffs some more. He says, hmm. He's kind of sniffed you a little bit and then he kind of walks behind you he says hmm celestial silver he sniffs deeply again his golden blood he says ow and he shoves his little hand into his pocket uh, a pouch on his belt he pulls out some dust and he sort of throws it in the air around you uh, and you see several disembodied floating eyes come into focus behind you, hovering all around you. They were watching. But this powder he has thrown reveals them. Uh, you recognize um, these eyes. They're the same eyes you saw manifest in the Bronze Sphere when you served uh, Thavrit, the god of prophecy and destiny. It seems Stavris, uh has been keeping an eye on you. Spells keeping others from scrying you um, don't seem to be able to keep out the prying eyes of a god. But this gnome 
after revealing them, shoes them away. Shoo! Get out of here. Go on, get. Oh. And the eyes slowly fade away. You have stumbled upon a very powerful creature to banish uh, direct observance of the eyes of God there. He turns to you and studies you for a moment. Uh, he says, uh, You there, half-elf, draw that blade of yours. And Resme pulls out her Frostbrand longsword. He says, Ah, Frost Enchantment. He goes in, gives it a big sniff. Says, Ugh! Human made. Ugh. You'd think they'd eventually learn how to make a magic weapon. They forge a blade, slightly less crude than an orc, then pay some wizard to enchant it, never once learning the true craft. While a blade is forged, you need to work the magic in while the metal is still hot, binding the weave itself with the metal like an alloy. That's how I made Rondang here, and she's darn near perfect. And the Warhammer floats over to him, and you hear uh, Kahim and Resme here in a fluttery voice. The Warhammer speak, says, you flatter me, master. But the rest of you, you just sort of see it sort of flare up with flames on the top. What about I need... Uh, uh, no. Not that. That's your, I, I see everything? No. Unfortunately. But I need everyone to make a religion check. Real quick. Ugh. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is this sub six roll constant all fucking night? <sighs> Yeah, I'm basically the Antichrist, so I'm not surprised that... Oh, all right. Yes, there's my... Kahim, you recognize um, you are in the presence of a god. But it is not Gond. Uh, it is a gnomish pantheon god named Flandel Steelskin. Gnomish god of mining and smithing. He is good friend with Nibelin. AKA Dawn. You recognize that name, Rondang, uh, the name of his Warhammer. So he says, um, oh, Yeah, Flandel Steelskin. Um, he says, Our mutual friend told me you might be stopping by. And he kind of points backward at that portal gate. He says, uh, he said you'd need these. He gestures, he gestures upward as the forge kind of flares, and the darkness around the room fades away, and you see hundreds of shelves filled with various jars, lamps, and other vessels. So it's been here since them Kalashites threw off the yoke of their gin long ago. By my count, there's 6,734 genies here, plus a few of Nobelin's own loyal creatures. The basin purified the evil from their souls. Nothing but good in them now. You guys all realize uh, you've officially gathered all the forces now. As you have an army of jinn at your command. Oh, shit! Forces have been gathered. Yes. So, you guys are officially ready to stage a coup and really shake things up on the elemental plane of air. You guys have anything to say to Flandel Steelskin? Rumpel Steelskin? No, I don't even know who he is. So. 
<laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> Ah, uh, you must be the one that's been gathering the forces. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Clearox like, I've never noticed this door before. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Wh whatever your name was in Rondang. His flandel steel skin. Thank you, steel skin and Ronde. He does a polite bow. Says, I'll be seeing you again. He goes back to work in the forge. You guys gently shove several thousand of these uh, things into your bags of holding. <laughs> Yeah. And then Lurak You know, you guys get you guys lock up the basin again, you turn the key. Um Clearak says, you know, this is all up to you now. He's gonna retire uh, back into the box the remainder of this conflict. You're not going to help see it through? He's far too old for this now. I mean, yeah. he's going to he's going to not be like on the front lines. He's going to be like coordinating, right? Cuz he's got his sky captain in there um and some of the various forces when it comes time to retake a car. Um but as far as adventuring out in the world, like he just did. Although it was mostly a, a trek, I guess, not an adventure. But he's giving the guardianship to you. Um, he will name Akir the new head of the order. Uh, and he will be Retiring to the box to coordinate the strikes. Wishes you all Godspeed. Gone speed. Gone speed. <laughs> oh my god. Gone speed, oh you black god. emperors. Alright. So what is it, like a thousand army guys in our pocket or something? Several thousand jinn. These jinn were imprisoned in vessels created by the Basin of Binding thousands of years ago when your people overthrew the Jinn. They've been sitting here for thousands of years. have had a lot of time to think. So the idea is that they're now going to help us? Yes, the Basin purifies uh, the creatures who are imprisoned. Uh... Let's make sure we don't bring Zufar's base, basin back here, or whatever. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, you imprison them, them, you bring them here, you dip their imprisoned thing in the basin, and they become... good. They become chill dudes. Sweet. So we got thousands of chill dudes with this. Powerful yeah. chill dudes. Most, the most powerful chill dudes ever. A lot more warlocks are gonna get the contract yeah. once all these release <laughs> yeah so you guys head on back to the great cog you can't teleport here but um yeah Clearock goes back in the box this little demi plane you guys step on a pedestal at the end of the cog and float back up through the quicksand Back into the Callum Desert. Hmm. And we are going to pick up here later because I want Eric to be here. Even though we only played for about an hour. Um, but I guess I'll preview it 
when you guys come back up to the surface, um, it has begun pouring rain. It's quite strange in the desert. It doesn't happen often, especially, you know, it was a clear night. Um, but you see in the distance lightning striking over leagues and leagues and it seems to be repeatedly striking the same place over and over over and over and over and over and over this is like us looking at this in the distance yeah damn far to the east um, you kind of noticed you know the stars before you went down you, there is an ominous wind on the desert. Hmm. I bet there's some cool Here. ominous wind. Some yeah. Escapes out there. You see... Yeah, like, it, does the wind like draw towards the lightning? Yes. And you see in a massive thundercloud far, 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 far away the shape of a massive djinn. Like the shadow of one as the lightning kind of plays within the clouds. With horror, you realized Zufar has begun his assault on the material plane. Presumably on Kalimshan. Uh, Kalimport, that is. Damn. The final showdown is upon us, and we'll do that with Eric for sure next week. Raleigh like plucks a loose feather and kind of like tosses it up in the air and watches it float towards like the the lightning strike and the shadows in the distance. Yes. An ominous wind. Kahim prepares to teleport you guys just outside Calport. We'll pick that up next week for sure. Good story, Thank you. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. See you all next week. Later. Next.